Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Now, usually on this show, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks on a $25 budget. But today, we're going to do a Commander Quick Take. On episodes like these, I give you my initial take on newly spoiled Commanders from an upcoming set. For each Commander, I'm going to talk about a potential direction to take them. And I'm also going to give you some initial cards that I'm considering for that build. Now, I might not be able to get to every single new Commander at once, but I will get to them eventually. And as always, prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. I just want to give a quick disclaimer before we jump into this. On episodes like these, they are just initial quick takes. These commanders are just as new to me as they are to you. And because of that, I don't have any finalized decks built for these commanders. So the direction that I initially take with one of these commanders might not be the same direction that I take them in a deck tech. And because of that, some of the cards I'm going to mention might not be in those decks either. But now that we're on the same page, let's get into it. So let's get into our first quick take with Kefnet. God Eternal Kefnet is a 4-5 flying zombie god that costs 2 blue blue. It has you may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it. Whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery card this way, copy that card and you may cast the copy. That copy costs 2 less to cast. And then when God Eternal Kefnet dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. I mentioned this before in a previous video, but I don't know if that second line of text is going to be very relevant in Commander. But that first ability is pretty incredible. This not only gets us a copy of a card, but it also reduces the cost of it. And since it's the first card that we draw each turn and not just during our turns, we can do this on our opponent's turns too. This seems like a very powerful and potentially broken effect, especially in blue. Not only does blue have some very powerful instants and sorceries, but it also has ways to manipulate the top of your library. The first direction I thought of taking this deck would be to build around extra turn spells. There aren't too many budget ones out there, but ones like Karn Temporal Sundering, Part the Water Veil, and Beacon of Tomorrows could be included. Extra turn spells for the most part are very hard to abuse. Karn Temporal Sundering and Part the Water Veil both exile themselves after you cast them, and Beacon of Tomorrows makes you shuffle it back into your library. Kefnet helps us get around this because it's going to let us cast a copy of it. It doesn't matter to us if that copy gets exiled, and we get to keep the original in our hand. Then we can get that original back on top with cards like Brainstorm, Riverwise Augur, and Leashling. Brainstorm and Riverwise Augur allow us to draw three cards and then put two cards from our hand back on top of our library in any order. But Leashling might be even more effective because it allows us to put a card from our hand on top of our library and return Leashling back to our hand. So with enough mana, we can do this an infinite number of times. Now this deck doesn't have to really revolve around this combo, but we still want to ramp a decent amount anyway to cast our big spells. And if we want to, there are a decent amount of ways in blue to tutor up for this combo. But outside of extra turns, we'd want to cast some really impactful instants and sorceries. So we'd be running things like Engulf the Shore, River's Rebuke, and Spell Twine. Engulf the Shore is a fantastic bounce spell that can bounce pretty much every creature back to their owner's hand. And then River's Rebuke can return all non-land permanents one player controls back to their hand. And then Spell Twine just provides us with an incredible amount of value allowing us to cast an instant or sorcery from our graveyard in an opponent's graveyard too. And again, if we happen to draw these as our first card in a turn, we can cast a copy of these for two less than what they cost. On top of that, we'd still have the original to cast again when we need to. Even with a budget restriction, we can still make this deck very powerful around this commander. God Eternal Kefnet definitely has a very unique ability, and I'm excited to build around it. Now it's time to go into our second quick take with Bantu. God Eternal Bantu is a 5-6 zombie god that has menace and it costs 3 black black. It says when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents, then draw that many cards. It also has the same text that all the other War of the Spark gods have too. This seems like a decently powerful effect, especially from the command zone. I think the most effective way to build around this is an aristocrat style strategy where we gain value from our creatures dying. The more creatures that we get onto the battlefield, the more that we can sacrifice and draw more cards. So we'd be running creatures like Weaponcraft Enthusiast, Endrixar, Master Breeder, and Pawn of Ulamog. A creature like Weaponcraft Enthusiast creates tokens when it comes into play, and 3 mana for 3 creatures is a great value. And then Endrixar says whenever you cast a creature spell, put X11 black thrall creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is that spell's converted mana cost. It also says whenever you can control 7 or more thralls, sacrifice Endric Star, but we usually can make sure that we don't get to 7. So with just this in play, when we cast Bantu, we're going to get 5 creatures that we can sacrifice. And then Pawn of Ulamog is going to create tokens whenever it or one of our non-token creatures dies. There are multiple creatures that we can run that have this type of effect, so this can get out of control quickly. But with an aristocrat style strategy, we want to benefit off of our creature's deaths in more than one way. So we're also going to be running cards like Zulaport Cutthroat, Pitiless Plunderer, and Smothering Abomination. Zulaport Cutthroat is going to drain each of our opponents and gain us life every single time one of our creatures dies. And then Pitiless Plunderer is going to create us treasures whenever our creatures die. The best part about this is that we can use our treasures in multiple ways. We can use them as a temporary source of ramp, or we can actually sacrifice them with Bantu. And then Smothering Abomination is going to draw us a card every single time we sacrifice a creature. So essentially it's going to double up our card draw from Bantu on any creatures that we sack. Bantu 
Bantu can be a great engine, but it's also a good idea to have some backup plans too. So we're going to be running cards like Voyager Staff, No Rest for the Wicked, and Demir Houseguard. Voyager Staff allows us to exile Bantu and bring her back so that we can get her into the battlefield trigger again. By sacrificing No Rest for the Wicked, we can return to our hand all creature cards that were put into our graveyard from play this turn. A card like this is even more effective when we can actually sacrifice Bantu as well. So we're also going to be running some other sacrifice outlets like Demir Houseguard. Bantu's sacrifice effect is good, but we can't depend on repeating her effect. So like any aristocrat strategy, we want a lot of free sacrifice outlets. God Eternal Bantu is definitely an interesting commander to build around, but she could also be very effective in the 99. But now it's time to move on to our final quick take with Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet Reborn is a 6 6 flying dragon avatar that costs Wooburg. It has when Niv Mizzet Reborn enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is definitely a very unique commander, and I'm very excited about the challenge of building around it. That Enter the Battlefield trigger can definitely gain you a lot of card advantage. The more guilds that we run in this deck, the higher percentage chance we have of hitting multiple cards. But there's definitely a balance with that, especially with a budget deck. We need to make sure that we can fix our mana to get our commander out and to cast our cards. So we're going to be running ramp and fixing cards like Wayfarer's Bobble, Armillary Sphere, and Wildfield Border Post. Wayfarer's Bobble is a fantastic card because it ramps and fixes our mana. And while our Millery Sphere doesn't ramp us, it's going to get two lands into our hand. There are five border posts and we would run every single one in this deck. We can pay one and return a basic land back to our hand instead of paying the border field's cost. This comes in huge if we don't have the colors that we need to cast them. And since these are two colors, Niv can actually get these into our hand. Since green is the best color for ramp and fixing, we should probably focus around that color as well. This allows us to more effectively and consistently ramp so that we can cast our commander. I'm not saying that every single card in this deck should have green in it, but it's definitely going to help us to be a little more consistent. When we're building a 5 color budget deck, this is definitely something we need to keep in mind. So after we ramp and fix our mana and cast our commander, what do we do next? We're likely to hit a couple of spells that are going to go into our hand, but we want to get even more. So we're going to work to abuse that enter the battlefield trigger with things like turn to mist, replicate, and altered ego. Turn to mist lets us blink Nim Mizzet so we can get his enter the battlefield trigger again. Replicate's going to create a token copy of Nim Mizzet, which will get its own enter the battlefield trigger. Although Although the token's gonna die, it's well worth the effect. And then there's Altered Ego, which is a more flexible clone card. We can do the same thing and make it a copy of Niv to get that Enter the Battlefield trigger. Or we can make it a copy of one of our opponent's best creatures and put plus one plus one counters on it. So essentially it can be a draw spell for us, or it can be a huge threat. To win with this deck, we're going to be running some other two-color threats like Atarka World Render, Consuming Aberration, and Progenitor Mimic. Atarka has, whenever a dragon you control attacks, it gains double strike until end of turn. So not only is Atarka going to be attacking for 12, but so is Niv Mizzet. And the Consuming Aberration could be a game-ending threat on its own, and whenever we cast a spell, it's just going to get bigger. If we're desperate for cards, we can make Progenitor Mimic into a copy of Niv Mizzet, but usually we're just going to take our opponent's best creature and make it a copy of that. Because as long as the original stays in play, we get another copy of that creature each turn. There are plenty of powerful two-color cards out there, and Niv Mizzet helps us get a lot of them at once. If we ever need to refill our hand, we just have to blink him or clone him or recast him. And then we just get to pick from more great cards and keep the threats coming. And with that, this show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this episode, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying a deck or just individual cards, make sure to use our link in the description. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quests for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creators quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.